Stanford coming off that eight and five campaign in 2014, finished off with a demolition of Maryland in the bowl game. We bring in Don King because here in Mark Rogers TV, we're talking about quarterbacks around the country and we kick off the series with Don from Last Word on Sports. And Don, it's very apropos since you've helped us out so much that you help us uh, kick this thing off as we run through the Stanford quarterback situation. So let's talk some Kevin Hogan. Very fine 2014 campaign, not prolific. He's not going to wow you with a ton of statistics. 19 touchdowns, eight picks. Really only had one total downer against Arizona State, a light performance against Utah. But just your thoughts as we come into a senior season in which Kevin Hogan has seemingly been the quarterback forever and your thoughts about his progression. Yeah, Mark, uh, thanks for having us. Uh, good to, to be with you again and happy to talk Kevin Hogan, who um, – has been much maligned on occasion, um, even uh, periodically by me, um, as he's worked on his mechanics down through the years. But there are a couple of things that are pretty clear. Um, the kid is gutty and gritty. Um, he has won a ton of games uh, under center in a Stanford uniform um, and continues to work his way up those all-time career win lists uh, in Stanford history. Um, He's entering his fourth season as at least a part-time starter. You know, he was kind of half-time his, his first year as a redshirt freshman and a full-time starter for the last two seasons, and he enters his third year as a starter. Um, a very rare thing, if you think about it, around the nation. You know, most guys who really kind of uh, are on programs that are at least decent, as he has been for the last two-plus seasons, you know, head off to the, to the big league sometime thereafter you know, or wind up getting challenged or surpassed by the latest young phenom to come on the scene. Um, hasn't happened in Stanford's case. Um, Hogan kind of had, it was almost the tale of two halves last season, um, even though they weren't fully halves of a season. He was a world beater. Um, you know, and, and we didn't really find out until afterwards some of the personal difficulties he, he was dealing with throughout the season as his his father was uh, diagnosed with cancer and ultimately passed away just after the end of the regular season. Um, but, uh, you know, the Stanford faithful would do well to remind themselves that uh, there haven't been any other Andrew Luck type talents at the quarterback position since John Elway. Um, and candidly, Hogan is about as, as, uh, as strong a performer as you can hope to expect. Uh, to replace one of the all-time legends in Stanford football history. Um, so Hogan has had a very steady career, a very solid career. Honestly, uh, if he can work out some issues with his mechanics, his understanding of the pro-style offense and how to push the buttons and how to make that thing go should actually lead him to at least be a candidate for a professional career after this season. So, you know, it's it's not unfair to say that as Hogan goes, so goes Stanford in the 2015 campaign. Uh, but there's plenty, plenty of reason for optimism, given what we've seen from the young man in the past. Don King joining us from Last Word on Sports to talk uh, Stanford quarterbacks. So Hogan, very familiar to us. But uh, when we look at the backups, not a whole lot of experience there. That's not uncommon across the country, though. You got Evan Crower coming into his junior season, completed 15 of 27 last year. Ryan Burns, same situation as a junior, only threw one pass last year. The Cardinals signing no quarterbacks in the 2015 class. So your rundown of the backups that we talked about and, and some other help on the way. Sure. Uh, Crower uh, figures to be a graduate transfer to somewhere. I'm not positive if we know his landing spot yet, but he, he will graduate this spring and he looks to transfer out um, uh, somewhere else. There have been rumblings about Virginia um, but he looks to head somewhere on the East Coast uh, to, to play immediately as a, as a graduate transfer. Um, I think the most likely backup for the 2015 campaign is Ryan Burns, uh, ironically, who played his high school ball in the state of Virginia. Uh, and I think he is uh, likely to win the backup spot. I think he's a solid performer. Uh, apparently had a very strong spring, did not look great in the uh, spring game. You know, but but playing behind the second and third team offense is a recipe for disaster, particularly when up against the first team defense, which played really well. Um, but he does seem to have a, a pretty solid grasp on the offense now. He's, he's been on the farm for two, two full years, you know, redshirted as a freshman year, got just a few snaps last year. Um, and I think he looks to be the backup for Hogan. My guess is that he has a slight lead 
with regard to understanding the offense overall. Um, the other quarterback uh, to keep an eye out for this coming season and in the future is Palo Alto High School product uh, Keller Christ, who um, has all the potential in the world, probably has the best mechanics of the three. He's probably the biggest of the three and is still a decent athlete in his own right. Um, he's just coming off a redshirt freshman year in which he didn't play and has therefore the least amount of experience in the offense. So I think for 2015, you can probably expect Burns to be the backup. Uh, that That's the way it looks like this thing is headed. Um, but for 2016, do not be surprised to see Keller Chris become the guy uh, to, to take the mantle over uh, after uh, Kevin Hogan has exhausted his eligibility. So as long as Hogan stays healthy and produces, Chris and Burns will continue to be the most uh, anonymous guys on the roster, but we know how that works. Uh, they're Indeed. the most invisible guys on the roster, and they're one play away from being the most important guy on the roster. So That's so exactly that right. Yeah, All and right, I, will, I will say there's, there's plenty of reason to feel okay about the situation, even though those guys are incredibly inexperienced, haven't gotten much live action, you know, facing live bullets, if you will. Uh, in real regular season or postseason ac uh, action. But both were incredibly highly touted coming out of high school. Both seem to have all of the physical tools. Um, and if if needed, um, there is some reason to believe that either one of them could step in and do a more than adequate job. And it's, it's worth remembering that, uh, you know, before Kevin Hogan became the full-time starter three seasons ago now, you know, he was buried on the depth chart. You know, coming out of that spring, he was fourth or fifth, and he was – third coming out of fall camp. And by mid-season, you know, he was the starter and ran off seven straight wins to end the season and wound up winning a Rose Bowl that year after after winning a conference championship game. So, you know, there's some precedent in it. And, and candidly, the other thing we know is this is an offense that kind of takes some time to grow into. Uh, so having uh, Burns, who's had a couple of different, you know, seasons to, to really master the playbook, um, and Chris, who had a, a full year to watch and, and some time to grow into his own, and also, you know, a full year in the strength and conditioning program to, to bring that already impressive physical frame, you know, into Division One level strength and and uh, uh, and stamina. Uh, those two guys are, are you know, I, I'll, let's put it this way: Stanford should feel as good about its quarterback position coming into this season as as all but maybe you know. Uh, eight or nine other programs in the entire United States. Um, it, it, it looks pretty solid. Um, it, it, it is going to come down to Hogan to produce in order for Stanford to get back to that 10-11 win uh, level and compete for a conference championship again. Um, but it does look like the future is quite bright. All right, very good. Don King, last word on sports, breaking down the Stanford quarterback situation for us, Don. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Mark. It's been a pleasure.